Hi, this is Lee Newbecker from Enigma Forensics, and I have Debbie Reynolds back on the show. Thanks for coming back, Debbie. Thank you for having me. Very nice to be here. So um, I'm very interested to hear more of what your research is regarding contact tracing apps and what you think that means for you know, individuals that might put these apps on their phone. Uh, tell me a little bit about what's happening right now with the industry and how contact tracing apps are, are working. Yeah. Uh, so um, a Apple and uh, Google created a capability so that phones can communicate with each other via beacon uh, so that they can uh, store information on phones or have phones bounce off of one another so that if someone downloads a contact tracing app and registers there, if anyone who ha also has the app, it will be able to, to trace back, you know, how long they spent with, the, you know, certain people and tell them whether they feel like they may have been um, explo exposed in some way and tell them either to, you know, quarantine or go seek treatment in some way or, uh, you know, get tested. Uh, so it's pretty controversial, uh, the contact tracing apps, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one is people are very concerned about privacy, like giving their, their potential medical information to a company that's not a medical provider, meaning that they're not protecting the data the same way. Um, also, um, as you know, um, Bluetooth technology isn't exactly super accurate in terms of you know, the distance that you are from someone. So, uh, you know, and the, the, the delta in terms of, you know, how accurate it can be may be way off, you know, maybe several meters off, you know, it, the phone can't tell if you're six feet apart or whatever. So um, I think that they've tried to tune that up with this new API that they created. Uh, but, it, you know, still Wait. based on the science, we don't know if that is actually accurate or not. So you could still have a situation where uh, if you put one of these apps on and you're outside biking and you bike within eight to 10 feet of someone who later does have it, that you're getting notified that you have to quarantine on a false basis. Um, that's a potential outcome of using an app like that, correct? Yeah, but I think that the way they have it now is that it's supposed to register if you spent more than 15 minutes with near that person. So uh, Okay, you know, that's good to let, know. But let's say you're parked in your car and someone's parked next to you in your car. So you aren't physically near, you know, you aren't in any danger from that person, but you wouldn't know, you know, just because your phone says you're close to them, they don't understand the circumstance that you're in to mm -hmm. be able to tell that. So I think people are concerned about you know a lot about privacy them taking the data how the app is actually going to work wow. uh, and it's going to work differently in different countries so what they've done is create this api this capability that's put on everyone's phone and then if you download the app the app that you use will use that api to actually do this uh beacon exchange uh on people's phones so uh that's kind of what's happening right now is, you know, different countries or different places are implementing them in different ways. And some are really pushing back on them because they don't have really any good guarantees about privacy or, you know, data breach. Data breach is a huge issue. Yeah, I mean, so, our, our government's never had data in their custody compromised ever, right? Right. That has never <laughs> happened. Exactly. So, so you're so, having your maps of where you're walking, your GPS records, yeah. time of day your movement and that right. is going to Google and Apple and under certain conditions, they're passing that data onto the CDC or other entities, law enforcement, enforcement groups. Well, um, they're, they're concerned that that data because it's at a private company will get merged with other things. Like yeah. let's say you're an insurance carrier or you're a medical, you know, you get dropped from your insurance because you, you have this app. Fast. <laughs> no, because you have this app and they think sure. that you may have been exposed or you're a higher risk or a bank doesn't want to give you like a loan or something because you have this app on your phone. So, it, I mean, there are a lot of different scenarios that people are concerned about. But I'm curious from your perspective um, in terms of how certain things are stored on, on phones. I know Beacons is, is a really big idea, but maybe you can explain a little bit about how Bluetooth actually works. 
Yeah, well, Bluetooth is a, a, a near band uh, wavelength that, that allows for peer to peer networking. Um, Bluetooth has been exploited in the past to be able to take over devices. So it's uh, a lot of people don't like to have their Bluetooth on continuously because you're opening your phone up to potential uh, attacks, cyber attacks via Bluetooth. Uh, you're also broadcasting, when you have Bluetooth on, you're also broadcasting your MAC address identifier, uh, your Bluetooth unique address. And there have already been issues where retailers in London at one time, they had, they had kiosks outside that would track the shoppers and they'd know how long they were at certain stores and they'd use that information to serve custom video ads to people as they're shopping, walking by. Right. So, you know, there's privacy implications and, you know, security implications of having Bluetooth on all the time. Yeah, and that's a big concern. So I know when I first heard this about them doing this contact tracing, I was wondering, like, how exactly would they get the proximity right? Um, and there, because we have no visibility to that, we really don't know, right? No. So just have to sort of trust the black box and see what happens to some extent. But, you know, I... For me, um, you know, I think my opinion is that uh, contact tracing is a profession. It's not an app. So, uh, you know, there are people who do this, you know, as a profession. Uh, uh, only, let's say, 55% of people in the world don't even have smartphones. So you're talking about capabilities only for 45% of the people, and not all those people are going to actually volunteer to get these apps uh so it doesn't really help the contact for people who do contact tracing except it adds another layer that they have to work with because yeah. they still have to track people whether they have cell phones or not well it's interesting stuff thanks for bringing that to our viewers attention and thanks for being on the show again all right thank you so much i really appreciate it